Hello, everybody, and welcome to Computer Science. We are going to jump in and get started with 1.01, what's its function? So when you hear computer science, it is the study of the principles and use of computers. So you may envision complicated math problems or long pages of letters and symbols, but it's more than just writing computer programs. It's the art of teaching a computer what to do and it's gonna help us solve problems. So coding plus ideas equals great results. We have computer science everywhere. Your alarm clock waking you up in the morning, um, it's solving a problem, right? You need to make sure you're awake at a certain time. The alarm goes off when you need it to, as long as you remember to set it. <laughs> and then, but computer science is not about learning how to type, that's keyboarding class, or how to play video game, that's downtime at home. This is about problem solving. <clears throat> and there's a couple things. So it can teach, it can tell a story. Um, you can use computer code, written instructions for a computer to make a short story come to life on the screen. Computer science can create job opportunities. It can create a game, it can make animated videos, and it can even build a robot. Computer, computers can be problem solvers. It can solve real world problems like coming up with um, a new vaccine or coming up with ways to protect the environment or improving traffic <laughs> on your way to school. Uh, computer science requires problem solving and selecting the right technology for the job. Computer software are computer programs that perform tasks and computer hardware is the physical part of a computer. So if you can touch it, like the monitor, the screen, the keyboard, the mouse, the microphone, and the graphic cards, those are hardware. Software could be the email programs, the internet browsers, an antivirus program to keep your computer safe. Software and hardware work together to do the things you're asking the computer to do. You just have the hardware, it's not gonna work. If you just have the software, it's not gonna work. They have to work together. When you play a video game, you need the device. The technology device has pieces of hardware like the controller. You can't play the game with just the hardware and you can't play it without the hardware. All right. So languages, like almost like you're learning French or Spanish, but you're learning computer languages now. Computer programming is a way of giving computers instructions about what they should do next. It's creating code. We give instructions to the computer and use the programming code so that it knows what to do next. There are several languages we can use. Each language has its differences, but they all share a common goal. The goal is to give instructions to the computer. We have block-based coding. Some of you may have seen this before. It's less complex. It's pretty easy to learn. The purpose of block-based code teaches us important concepts. It's very popular in schools and it's easy for students to use. Python is a very well-known coding program or coding language. It's easy to learn and easy to read. Python is a general purpose programming language. Google, Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, Dropbox, NASA, and ESRI all use Python. And then we have HTML. <clears throat> it's easy to use. Um, it's easy to learn the basics. It's free, it's accessible, and there are multiple versions available. HTML code is used to create the documents that will be displayed on the web. Apple, CyberCoders, Apex Systems, and Career Builders all use HTML. <clears throat> so computer programmers like rubber duckies, um, rubber duck debugging, is a useful tool. So debugging is the process of identifying and removing errors from computer hardware and computer software. 
<clears throat> so if you have a problem that stumped you, you might've asked for help, like, hey, can you help me figure out this math problem? Or can you help me figure out this dilemma? I don't know what to do. It's hard to solve a problem all by yourself. Sometimes you need to bounce ideas off others. Rubber duck debugging kind of helps. It helps you talk out, explain the problem, and explaining what the code is supposed to do, and then observing what it is doing, sometimes you can figure out where the error is and fix it. So what is a computer? A computer is a machine that works with information and helps people solve problems. Initially, computers were huge. Look at the picture from the 1950s. They took up the entire room. They were basically a giant calculator. Um, and then in the 1980s, they got a lot smaller. And now we can hold them in our hands and take them everywhere. It's not always clear if something's a computer or not. And different people have different points of view on whether it's a computer. So we need to decide what type of problem is it solving? Does the device use information to solve the problem? How does it use the information to solve the problem? And where does it get the information to solve the problem? So is a cell phone a computer? <clears throat> I think we can all assume yes. Let's jump to a gumball machine. Is it a computer? It's solving the problem of me wanting gum, but it's not really getting information from anywhere. I have to manually turn the knob. So a gumball machine is not a computer. Those are pretty easy. However, a washing machine in a car can get a little tricky. Now in this example, it's an old car. So I'm gonna say, nope, not a computer. But some of the newer cars, they absolutely have computer information in them. They are running computers um, or computers on wheels. A washing machine, one of the old ones, probably not a computer, even though it's solving the problem of my dirty, my dirty laundry. But nowadays you can program washing machines and all that stuff. So the newer washing machines, a little bit more like a computer than the older washing machines. A smoke alarm and a traffic light. Ooh, well, it is solving the problem of traffic and fires, but how are they receiving that information? Basically computers are everywhere. You can carry it in your pockets, in your car, in your backpack. It could be on your wrist in the form of a watch a smartwatch, we've come a really long way and we really don't know what it could look like tomorrow, five years from now, 10 years from now, 50 years from now. Since you are using a computer right now, we're going to guess that you are digitally literate. That means you are able to use information and communication technologies to find, evaluate, create, and communicate information. Basically, it means you know how to use the computer. You can turn it on and off, play music, watch movies, check your email, and probably a lot more. Okay, so how does it work? A computer needs to get information to solve a problem. The information computers get from use the information computers get from users, devices, and other computers is called the input. The information computers get. And that information given to users, devices, and other computers is called output. So if you're giving the computer information, you are inputting. If you are getting information from the computer, it's an output. All right, so this is an, a little example of input. So we're gonna get started and we're gonna input the information. Do I wanna spend a lot? Do I wanna spend a little? Do, whoops. Not a lot. Do you want to eat healthy or not healthy? I'm going to eat healthy. So it gave me three options. Let's try again. This time, let's say I want to spend a lot and I want to eat not healthy. I just got three completely different answers. Okay. So the input determined the output. Different examples of input would be typing on a keyboard. Uh, selecting play on a touch screen or moving a mouse or touching the screen. Output would be the changes that appear on the screen, the letters that appear on a screen, or making a song play through speakers. 
So computer processing, processing is a series of steps computers execute to turn input into output. So computer processing is what computers do to turn what you put in and then create the output. There's a few different ways, and there's more than just this, but there's a few different ways that computers can process the information. The first one is the if-then processing. So if I have $2, can I buy a milkshake? So it would determine the information um, and then, then tell you the outcome. Comparing. Okay, so let's compare how many states are bigger than another state. So the, it's comparing different information. You could compare how many, you know, I don't know, how many people drive uh, SUVs compared to cars. So you can give it information and then it will give you an answer. Finding a match. Okay, so if we're guessing the number in this example, or counting, how long does it take to do something? There are lots of other ways computers process information. We're just showing you some of the big ones. And now what I want you to do is go to your grade book, open up 1.01, .01, what's its function, and take the quiz. You are allowed to use your notes on that quiz. So make sure that you are writing down information as you watch the video and use that information to help you take the quiz. When you are done with the quiz, all the way at the bottom, you will see a little box and you will see a blue button that says submit for grading. You want to check that box and then click that blue button so that it comes to me so that I can have it graded for you. All right, everybody have a great day.